This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. Apple just released the new 16-inch MacBook Pro, and instead of making it an expensive top-tier high-end model, they're actually replacing the whole 15-inch lineup. And not only does that mean you can spend less money, but they're making a few different optimizations, uh, three in fact, that make this laptop probably the best MacBook Pro in terms of value for video editors. So today, I will let you know everything that has changed, I'm going to spend a small amount of time on the things that don't matter that much to video editing and put a bigger focus on what you guys need to know if you're a video editor in terms with the new parts that are in this computer. I will also be going over a different configurations, letting you guys know which ones you should buy depending on your budget and kind of what you're doing in terms of video editing. And I do have some links down in the video description to some of my recommended configurations if you guys want to check that out. Now, if you guys buy through those links, that helps support the channel. It helps me make those very detailed videos comparing different laptops, the new generation compared to the old, comparing to an iMac or an iMac Pro. Those take a lot of time, a lot of money. So thank you guys for buying through those links. If you guys want to support the channel, I highly appreciate it. Now let's start out with the exteriors and not much has changed. They look very similar. They are slightly larger and a little bit heavier. And uh, that is because now we have a 16 inch screen and Apple's made some updates to the internals. And one huge update is the battery. Instead of being roughly at 82 watt hours or so, somewhere around there, we are now at 100 watt hours. And that is massive. That is actually the most, the biggest battery that you can put on an airplane legally. Now, Apple has made an update to the keyboard, and a lot of people were waiting for this. We do have new key switches that have twice as much depth, so when you press down, it's going to feel nicer. It should be more reliable. Now, another thing that they updated are the speakers. This is something that I wasn't asking about. The current 15-inch MacBook Pro sound fantastic, but now instead of having two speakers that are stereo, we have six two dedicated subwoofers that actually cancel out each other's vibrations. So if we're going to have louder sound, better mids and highs, and better bass as well. So I look forward to testing that out. We also have improved microphones that they call studio quality. The display obviously is slightly higher resolution so that the quality stays the same, same brightness, same color accuracy. It's not HDR, unfortunately, but they do have a new option to change the frame rate. And that might make some difference in smoothness, having a little bit less jitter with 24 frames per second footage, but what's even more important is battery life. The previous few generations of MacBook Pros have really suffered in terms of heating up. You would lose performance. And in 2018, when they introduced the six cores, the i9 actually ran slower than the i7. So I told people not to spend the extra money and earlier this year, when they released the ones with eight cores, I told people not to get the high-end eight core model, but get the base eight core model because the performance was identical. Well, now we have new fans. Some of the components have been moved around. The airflow is 28% better. The heatsink is 35% larger. And they say that gives us up to 12 watts more of sustained power meaning that those CPUs that are in there can run uh, faster. So I don't know if the 2.4 gigahertz, the same processor that we had before, will be better now than 2.3. It could be the same. We'll have to go and test that out. Uh, but definitely both of them are going to run faster. And same thing goes for the 6 core for the base model. So the processors have stayed the same, but we have some differences in other components, mainly the graphics, which is probably the thing that I am the most excited about. Now, before I tell you the major differences in graphics and give you some info that other people are just not even talking about. Maybe they don't know. Maybe I just spent too much time looking at the white papers and stuff. Let me give a big shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. Over the years, I have built many websites. I built ones from scratch. I've built ones from templates and other platforms. And Squarespace is by far my most recommended method. Not only do they make it incredibly easy to make an amazing looking website, but I think the biggest selling point for us creatives and us business owners is that you don't have to worry about fixing issues and plugins and any of those things that come along with having a custom website or one from a template. Everything works, it works well, so you're not taking time to fix it or paying other people to maintain an update and fix your website. It just works. That way you can focus on doing the things that you love. Whether you're somebody like me that needs a portfolio site or maybe need a blog or e-commerce, Squarespace has got you covered with great cross-platform designs to choose from 
and they have SEO tools and security certificates built in, which make it an amazing value. Head to squarespace.com slash max to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into what I think matters most, the heavy hitters, and those are the graphics cards. So we finally have a seven nanometer graphics chip or chips with these new MacBook Pros. And if you don't know what that means, that just means the chips are smaller and that allows them to use less power, meaning they can run faster uh, with using less electricity and putting out less heat. And less heat matters the most in a laptop. So the base model 5300M graphics card is now faster than the previous best possible graphics card, the Vega 20, and it uses less power. So that is just mind blowing. But what's even more better is the fact that Apple is no longer locking us in to having sucky graphics cards with a base model. And in the past, we had to spend more money to get the higher model just to have the opportunity to spend another $350 to get the Vega 20. And now for $2,400, they're giving us a graphics card that's better than the previous top end graphics. That is just awesome. Now, Apple is showing us some really good improvements in Final Cut Pro. So comparing the 550M to the Vega 20, we get 30% faster rendering. And if you compare the previous 560X, which it was uh, you had to spend $2,800 to get that, the new uh, lower end model is 90% better. So that's a really good improvement. Now in terms of gaming, I know this is not about gaming, but about 55% better as far as gaming uh, comparing Vega 20 to this new chip. So if you're on bootcamp, keep that in mind. Now for DaVinci Resolve, comparing the 5500M with eight gigs to Vega 20, we have 80% faster effects rendering and comparing the lower end models that came for 2800, 75% better. Um, so we're getting a much better value. Now, another thing that we didn't get before is the ability to have eight gigabytes of video memory for the graphics card. That was one of my complaints. And now we have the ability to have eight gigs. So if you're doing stuff higher than 4K or if you're doing 4K with a lot of effects, animations, before you would hit that ceiling and that would limit your performance of the actual chip because you don't have enough video memory. So I would tell anybody, if you're doing video editing, get this higher end graphics card with eight gigabytes of video memory. A couple things that other people aren't talking about is what's built into these chips and that is high end decoding and encoding of video. So the previous Vega graphics could decode 4K up to 60 frames per second uh, and they could encode it that way as well. Whereas the new chips, it can actually decode 4K up to 150 frames per second for H.264 or 90 frames per second for H.265 and that is both with 8-bit and with 10-bit. Now the 10-bit matters a lot more and with this T2 chip, the biggest limitation was that it cannot encode 10-bit HDR content. So a five minute project in Final Cut would take about an hour to uh, encode and that was just crazy. So the T2 chip hasn't gotten any better, but with these new graphics, it can actually encode 4K 90 frames per second at 10 bits. So I don't know how long it's gonna take for Apple to utilize this with Final Cut or with Adobe or Blackmagic, but once they do, instead of taking roughly between a half hour to an hour with these programs, now it could be as little as two to three minutes, uh, depending on your frame rate and other things. So that's gonna be a massive improvement. Now let's get into the configurations. I'm gonna show you guys where Apple is saving you quite a bit of money compared to last year, where they made some very smart choices that make me very happy. Uh, and it's gonna make a lot of video editors happy. And I'll also show you guys kind of what I recommend. So starting off, we have the same price points as before, 24 and 2800, uh, but one major difference is the fact that the base model now comes with double the SSD. So right away, right there, that's a $200 savings. Let's go into that and I'm gonna give you guys a recommendation for you know regular video editors. Right off the bat, if you spend $2,400, you're gonna have a really great system. A system that for most people, for regular 4K editing is gonna outperform a system that cost 3,150 the year before. Now that system would have been an eight core, but with these new video editing programs and all the latest updates, especially to Final Cut with this new metal engine, your graphics card is doing a lot more of the processing than your CPU. Uh, and last year, the graphics card was the bottleneck. 
even if you got the Vega 20, which is what I had. So because of that, I actually did not upgrade to the new 2019 models because the graphics card was identical and those extra two cores that ran faster didn't make much difference for actual video editing. Apart from me complaining that you can't get Vega 20 with the six core because the six core is enough for most people, my other complaint is that the Vega 20 only had four gigs of video memory. So for a lot of people, if you're doing lots of effects, titles, animations, working with higher resolution footage, that four gigs was a limitation and you'd hit that wall of memory and it would actually slow down your performance. Regardless of who you are and what you edit, I would say definitely try to spend the extra $200 to get the 550M with eight gigabytes of video memory. As we move forward, more and more processing is gonna be done with graphics cards. So you definitely wanna make that investment before getting 60, or before getting 32 gigs of RAM, before getting eight core, before doing anything else. And this machine right here is just gonna be awesome. If you're editing regular 4K, this is enough right here. Now, if you like to have multiple applications open, if you edit with Premiere Pro, if you do After Effects, then I would say definitely step up to 32 gigs of RAM, $400 just like before. We also have the option of 64 gigabytes of memory. Now, unless you get an eight core, unless you're spending a lot of money, uh, unless you have lots of applications open at the same time, you're really pushing it, I would say most people don't need this, but what is good is that Apple is giving us a good value for this. Before, like if you wanna go from a base to 64 or 128 on the iMac Pro, they would charge you way more. They wouldn't give you a linear price uh, of upgrading your RAM. Now it's 400 bucks. In fact, you're paying 400 for 32 gigs of RAM, whereas the lower tier, you're paying 400 bucks to go from 16 to 32, meaning you're only getting 16 gigs extra. So the value is actually there. Thank you, Apple, for not ripping us off. Now, before I talk about the CPUs and upgrading that, let's get into the storage. So the base model has double what we had before. Now we can get up to eight terabytes of the fastest, best chips on the market that run super fast. Before, from the base model up to four terabytes, which was the limit, they would charge you $3,000. Now, from the base up to eight terabytes, double what we had before, 2,400. So still expensive much more reasonable though and i'm glad uh, i was expecting it to be to like be like four grand when i saw the announcement that came with eight terabytes so thank you apple for not you know ripping us off there now if you're somebody that does raw editing higher resolutions or you have extra money to spend then I would go up to the next tier. That is where the eight core can come in, especially with the better thermals now. Uh, it's gonna perform better. In that case, I, I still don't know if it's worth getting the 2.4 gigahertz one that costs an extra 200, but the eight core is gonna be good. I'll make sure you absolutely have the best graphics for that. Make sure you have 32 gigs of RAM if you're getting the eight core. And here for $3,200, now we have double the storage uh, and much better performance, better thermals, better CPU performance, much better graphics performance. And we're gonna have an all around machine that's gonna make a lot of people happy with the new keyboards, improved sound, improved battery life. Uh, this is probably the biggest update to MacBook Pros for video editors. Once again, I have my recommended configs down in the video description so you guys can go and check that out. If you order through that, that helps support the channel. I'm gonna have lots of video editing comparisons showing you guys the thermals, the graphics performance, what can you expect, and which model you should get uh, depending on what you're doing. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.